Next, I will introduce the idea of confidence intervals. Let's recall the definitions of the parameter and statistic. A parameter is a numerical summary of a population. A statistic is a numerical summary of a sample. The following table summarizes the differences between the two. A parameter is something that is computed from a population. While unknown, it remains constant. A statistic is something that is computed from a sample of size n. While it may vary from sample to sample, it can be easily found when needed. The most common application of a statistic is to estimate the unknown parameter. We define a point estimate of a parameter as a single value used to estimate the parameter. The sample mean, sample proportion, and sample variance all can be used as point estimates of their corresponding population parameters. For example, I can use the average age of the students in the class as a point estimate of the average age of all students in the college. But keep in mind that a point estimate doesn't have to be a statistic. For example, without any survey, I can guesstimate the average age of all college students to be 25 years old. Is there a difference between the two estimates? Intuitively, we know that the sample mean is a better estimate, but why? We define an unbiased estimate as a point estimate whose long-term average equals the parameter. Otherwise, the point estimate is called a biased estimate of the parameter. So all the sample statistics in the table above are unbiased point estimates of their corresponding parameters. Now that we know that we can estimate an unknown parameter with an appropriate sample statistic, we have the following question. How confident can one be when using a sample statistic as a point estimate? In other words, what are the chances that a random observation of a statistic will be equal to the parameter exactly? The answer is zero because the sample statistic is a continuous random variable and the probability of any continuous random variable being equal to a single value is always zero. In other words, we have zero confidence that a point estimate is equal to the unknown population parameter and vice versa. We have zero confidence that the unknown population parameter is equal to one random observation of the sample statistic. So if there are zero chances that any point estimate equals exactly the parameter, why do we use the point estimates? Consider the following example. Let's say we are running late to a meeting and we receive a call with a question. How long will it take us to get there? One of the appropriate and probably the most common answers is we will be there in let's say 10 minutes. This is an example of a point estimate of our arrival time. According to our discussion, we are 0% confident that we will get there in exactly 600 seconds or 10 minutes. Notice that while there are zero chances that we, it will take us exactly 10 minutes to arrive, the point estimate did answer the question. So often we use a point estimate because the problem demands for some number and it is necessary to assume some value to continue with the solution. Soon, we will have situations in which we need a population standard deviation or proportion, but instead we will be using a sample standard deviation or a sample proportion. Is it possible to increase the confidence level? Consider the previous example. We are still running late to a meeting and we receive a call with the question. How long will it take us to get there? Is there another way to answer this question? How about instead of saying that we will be there in 10 minutes, which is obviously wrong, we say something like, we will be there between 5 and 15 minutes. This is an example of an interval estimate of our arrival time. Notice that the chances of our estimate being correct 
are now significantly higher than zero. In other words, with a positive confidence, we estimate our arrival time to be between 5 and 15 minutes. In general, we can increase the confidence level by using intervals instead of a single number. Is it possible to increase the confidence level to 100%? Continuing with the previous example, we are still running late to a meeting and we receive a call with the question, how long will it take us to get there? Is there a way to answer this question with 100% confidence level? Turns out that it is not as hard as it seems. How about we will be there sometime between now and tomorrow? This is an example of a 100% confidence interval, estimate of our arrival time. Why is there 100% confidence? Because the destination is only 5 miles away. Thus, we can be 100% sure that we will arrive there sometime before the end of the day, even if we must walk the rest of the trip. Is there value in a 100% confidence interval? Not much. In practice, the most practical estimate will be with a confidence level of 95% and we can increase it to 99% or decrease it to 90% depending on the application. Soon, we will create a formal approach to constructing and interpreting the interval estimates with a positive level of confidence.